What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are ya? Girl, it's been a minute. Now, I haven't uploaded in a few weeks and whew, it feels weird. Just sitting in the studio just feels so good and I finally got to play in makeup today and I wanted to really sit down and talk to you guys about what has happened in my life since my series with Shane has aired. It's been a crazy two weeks. You got like... Uh, it's been a whirlwind of emotions, of so many feelings, um, some so amazing, some very low, and I want to touch on some stuff today, and I have a few secrets that I didn't reveal to Shane, something that I, something that has made me lose some sleep the last few weeks, and I really need to get it off my chest, and I meant to do it just a few days after the series ended, and I just couldn't, and now it's on week two, and I need to say it. So I'm gonna get some things off my chest today that I really wanna share. We're gonna touch on some stuff that people had questions on, and I just kinda wanna dive into all of that. So grab a Red Bull, grab a water, grab a bong, and join me um, <laughs> for some conversations and a little sit down. Now, of course, my channel will always be makeup related, so I will be diving into more reviews, and there are a l there's so many products out. So the Jeffree Star Proof series will be, of course, back very soon. My channel has a lot of new stuff coming, you guys a lot of lifestyle stuff, a lot of more business like you guys have been asking, which I can't wait to dive into, but today will be a story time, so please join me and let's get started. Just before we get started into this video, I just want to say that there are some very graphic subject matters um, involving suicide and self-harm, so if you are triggered by that or those subjects bother you, please do not watch today's video. So I just want to give a warning to anyone out there. Please be aware that that is going to be a lot of the subject matter in today's video, so thank you. Okay, so, wow, I almost feel like a new person or an upgraded person or a different version of Jeffrey is sitting in this chair right now because so much has happened since all of you guys has, have watched the series. Now, looking back, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew that I was getting closer to Shane and he wanted to do this idea with me, um, and I was very apprehensive, very. You guys have seen the version of my life I have shown on Snapchat thus far up until the series, and now you guys see what really you know goes on behind the scenes, and it was very scary for me. To let down so many walls with someone I hadn't known for a long time was scary, but my gut said, trust Shane. He can be trusted, um, which is very scary. I don't trust a lot of people. I've had a lot of issues with previous friends and just so many people in and out of my life that were very negative and poisonous for 10 years now. It's just been, I've gone through a lot of friends and I see people who, you know, for who they are very quickly and girl. So I was very apprehensive and I didn't know what I was gonna show Shane. I really didn't know he was gonna come over, we were gonna talk, we were gonna see what was gonna happen and then no holds barred. I ended up showing everything. I did a closet tour on someone else's channel. I showed off really everything in my life, full disclosure, and I was scared. 100%. I was scared. I didn't know how you guys were going to react. I didn't want people to judge me on things that maybe they didn't understand, but then people have been judging me for things they didn't understand for years now, so I thought, you know what? Let's do it. Showing off money and, and all that stuff, that's fun. That really wasn't the point of it for me. I'm glad that you guys really get to see what I do behind the scenes and all my businesses and everything. It feels like, it's like, I hate the word dark secrets. Like it wasn't a crazy secret. I'd never wanted anyone to know. I really just thought you guys didn't, maybe wouldn't care or maybe it was too much to show or maybe it just wasn't interesting. It wasn't makeup related. So to get the feedback and the response from all of you was, it's, Oh, it's been overwhelming. Like, it's just, it's crazy. So to anyone out there that has watched The Secret Life of Jeffree Star, thank you for just even taking a second of your day to watch mine and really see everything for what it really is. It, it, it's been a crazy last few weeks. So as I let Shane in more and more into my life, he had the idea of going to my old apartment. And when he sprung it on me, I was very like, whoa. Because at the end of the day, I'm obviously the only one that knows what went down in that apartment, what has gone on throughout the years of my life, and so many painful memories came up that when he asked me on camera, it like 
hit me like a ton of bricks, but my gut said do it. Go there and just see what would happen. And that's very me. I'm like, okay, let's do it. We'll see what happens if we don't like it. You know, I'm trying to be very blasé, but there was this part of me that was like trembling. Um, and it was very like, it was, it was scary. I've been having so many mixed feelings lately. Like it's been hard to just sit down and articulate my thoughts. I felt, I felt so overwhelmed as each part was uploaded and the journey and you guys joined the journey with me and as I was watching the footage back you know it had been almost two months since we had filmed it so I had no idea how it was going to be put together um I don't know what anyone thought out there but Shane and Andrew did all the editing I did absolutely nothing but of course share my story but I didn't know what they were going to do or how they were going to articulate it so when I watched it it was intense beautiful crazy like I <laughs> I remember watching the last episode in my office, um, just crying. I turned off all the lights, I shut the door, and I played it, and it was hard to watch. It was hard, but it was good, it was healthy, and since opening up to Shane, I almost feel healed in a, in a weird way. I know that sounds crazy, but I really feel like a part of me that I thought was better, I thought was great, and I thought was, you know, I was already over this those feelings. I wasn't, and I actually feel like right now I am. But every day is a struggle, and if you out there are dealing with any issues like self-harm or anything like that that I have dealt with, just know that that's okay. It's okay to struggle every day. Um, I think people think you're cured or you're fixed and you wake up and you don't have feelings anymore, but you do. <sighs> the next thing I'm about to say is I'm scared. Um, I don't want you guys to think, I'm just gonna say it because I, I was scared to say it in the moment with Shane and when I, I, I felt like I had revealed so much to him, I couldn't reveal this last part. And in the series I say, um, Shane, I haven't cut myself or harmed myself in 10 years. Um, and that's a lie. And in the moment I didn't know how to say it, I felt I felt sick and since I filmed that I've, I've been feeling sick about it the entire time because four years ago is actually the last time um, I did anything like that and it wasn't because of the same reason back then it was because I felt so empty so hollow so alone I needed to hurt myself to even feel like I was real and now that I feel real and I've experienced real love and I've really discovered who I am, I don't feel like that anymore. But about four years ago, I kept thinking about it and I kept, whew, I, I kept thinking about it and I wanted to know if I was going to feel the same. That has, that time frame, I had just quit music. I was trying to start my brand. I was very lonely. I was very lost. And I went back to the old, the old ways that I had, um, but it didn't feel the same. And I think that's what's important to me and that's why I wanna share this is because it didn't feel like it used to. It didn't make me feel better. It actually felt very hollow, very empty, like this isn't it anymore. Like this is not how I felt and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I'd, I had been obsessively doing it for years. Like it was a sick game in my head and I never thought it would stop. So when it finally did, just having those feelings resurface was scary. So if anyone out there does have those feelings, that's okay. We're allowed to, you know, I hate the word relapse, but we're allowed to have those feelings again. We're allowed to feel how we want to feel because we're humans, but you need to work through it and I really needed to work through it. So a few times I went back to hurting myself and I knew that I didn't need to do that anymore. So since then I have not done anything ever like that again and I don't plan to. Do I have feelings? Yeah. Do I get depressed and sad? And of course I'm a human being um, and even this week has been so amazing, but there's been so many emotions in my head. It's like a roller coaster. And when people see you doing great, for some reason, people tend to attack. And it's been just a long week of just 
people really trying it um, with also so much greatness involved. So even though I'm very happy, there is that kind of like sadness that I feel will always be in my body, in my soul, like always just kind of like a heavy weight. Um, and I don't mean to sound depressing or sad. That's just how I truly feel. I feel like that's just in my bones. I didn't want to share this last part and think like, ooh, you were lying. Because I just felt like, fuck, man. I had told Shane so much, I like couldn't tell him anymore. I felt so naked and so stripped and so like, but I also felt like he could relate to me in ways that maybe other people couldn't. And when I saw so many of you sharing your stories with me, I didn't feel alone. Um, and I feel alone a lot, so I don't know. I just, I didn't lie to Shane. I just couldn't share that part, but I feel like I'm ready. And I didn't even know if I was going to talk about this, like, but I can't go back to just playing with makeup and not get some things off my chest. So besides that, I feel really good. There's a lot of questions of like, have you ever self-harmed recently? A hundred percent. No. Um, it's definitely been four years now in September. So whew. I guess I want to end this story by just saying if you have scars if you have dealt with what i've dealt with don't be ashamed um i chose to cover mine with tattoos because i felt like i needed to do that for me but if you ever feel embarrassed don't and i know that's so hard to say because i was so embarrassed for years i mean i wore long sleeves you guys for 10 years and literally no one ever asked me why they just thought i was gothic and that was my thing and i just always wore you know, black leather, and, and I'm just like, you know, the whole time I was just, I don't know, I, ugh, it's just, just going back to that headspace sometimes is a little scary. I think what I want to take away from sharing my story is that I'm just so happy that it opened up a huge dialogue for so many people that maybe were uncomfortable about talking about that subject or didn't know how. Um, now you can, and I think it's so important to talk about mental health and so many people just shove it away or they feel weird or embarrassed about talking about it, and it's just so important. So if you need help, ask someone, please, or if you know that someone maybe does just check on someone and see how they're doing because most people never checked up on me. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way towards anyone, but when I was really young, a lot of people just thought I was fine because I put up the front that I was fine. So sometimes the people that are hurting the worst inside are smiling on the outside. I'm just so thankful for the open dialogue on that subject. So thank you to everyone out there that shared their stories with me. Um, the other day I wrote on Instagram that I finally feel free. And I genuinely meant that in that moment. And right now I really feel like I can finally fully be myself. So that was the greatest thing that could happen to me from this series. Now, the next thing I'm about to tell you guys is a very weird and bizarre secret. And I'm gonna have to dive into this subject way more at length later. I don't feel very comfortable talking about it in a very big manner, and I'll explain to you guys why. What I'm about to tell you may be weird, it may shock you, you may be like, who cares, this is dumb, or you may be like, what the f***, what is, like, why? Um, and I'm about to tell you, but I am a little embarrassed because in my series with Shane, he asked a lot about my mom, and I told him all real, actual facts about her, but the imagery that pops up when you Google my mother is a lie. The name that pops up when you Google my mom and pictures of us, all of it is a lie. Up until Christmas time of last year, I had not spoken to my mother, my birth mom, in 10 years, okay? The main reason is because we always argued, our personalities always clashed, so every time we saw each other, we would fight. And I got to a point where it was just miserable, and looking back, it was hard to get along with me as my mom, I'm sure, because I never opened up, everything was always closed in, and I was always very closed off. Like, she would ask me, like, how are you doing? And I'd be like, fine. Like, that was me in high school very closed off, very short, like, how was your day at school? Great. <sighs> what I've learned is that time goes quick. Time goes by so fast. I'll never 
forget the first year that me and my mom didn't see each other. We texted each other like, hi, how are you? You still alive? How are you doing? Once or twice that year, and then two years turned into five. I tried seeing her once on a holiday. We were still broken. It was awful, it was awkward, it was weird. I hated every moment of it. That was the one and only time I had seen her in 10 years. And you may be asking yourself like, why didn't you reach out sooner? Why? There was so much pain and anger and frustration there. I couldn't believe how quickly time, I still can't believe it had been 10 years up until nine months ago. Honestly, like astonished how quickly 10 years went by, it's scary. Up until nine months ago, I had no idea how she looked, what she was doing, where she worked, where she lived, if she had remarried, do I have a stepfather? I knew absolutely nothing about the woman that gave birth to me. One third of my life I spent not talking to her and everything happens for a reason. She's back in my life now, I do wanna say that. That's, we're gonna get there in a minute, but the middle is very dark. So I have a confession. I've been lying to all of you. And the woman that I have been posting for the last five years is not my mother. It's crazy because you put us together, I'm about to show some pictures, but if when you put us next to each other, so many people were like, you guys look identical. You guys are twins, you guys look exactly alike. Oh my God, that's where you get your um, good looks from. And it's been a lie this whole time. And it started out as like a cute white lie. And I'm sure all of you are wondering, who is this woman? Her name is Lori and she is my actual aunt. So my father, Jeff, um, I was actually a junior before he passed away. So my father, Jeff, had two brothers, Philip and Roger. Now this is really sad, but my grandmother just turned a hundred years old and all three of her sons have passed away. She's outlived all of her children, her husband, and most of her family. <sighs> it's sad. And my uncle Phil is blood related, but my aunt, who you guys have seen throughout the years in my pictures as my mom, isn't even blood related to me. So it did start out as a white lie and I needed something to tell the internet. I was growing my my numbers were growing and I needed to say something. I felt almost embarrassed. My father was dead. A lot of my family had passed away. I wasn't close to a lot of my family. So my uncle Phil and Aunt Lori, before his passing, were married for 36 years. High school sweethearts. Only person she had ever slept with. Such a magical fairy tale. So when he passed, we really started to bond and get close and I'd kind of considered her a second mom. So I started calling her mom on the internet. I think me and her were both very lonely. We clung on to each other, definitely used each other for emotional support and had some amazing moments together. I, in my heart, I pictured my uncle Phil like a second father. And when we reconnected, cause I didn't talk to their family for a long time because my mom had previous beef with them, girl. Who else's family history is exhausting? Hi, right here. We had reconnected in such a strong way and my Uncle Phil was like a second father to me. So when he passed and me and Lori got close, I kind of pictured her as like a second mom. And the fact that I hadn't seen my own mother in so long, part of me felt like I would never see my mom again, which is so awful to say, but I really genuinely didn't think I'd ever see her again. Like we were never gonna reconnect. That's just how it was to me. It was very like, empty, I didn't really think of her often, and Lori became my mom on the internet. So I felt guilty at times. After having such a crazy year last year, I was in such a good mental place, and I felt in my heart, you know what? I think it's time to reach out. I found her number, got it from a family member. I'll never forget just sitting there staring out at the ocean, and I looked over to Nate and I go, I'm gonna find my mom and say hi. And he was like, whoa. Because he knew that was like, you know, I've talked I mean, I've talked about her, I've told him stories, but he's never even met her. Like, the love of my life, my man of over three years now, has never met my birth mom, right? He has now. But he hadn't up until that point in our relationship. It had just been a weird, you know, subject, a weird topic. And I wrote her and I go, Merry Christmas, how are you? <laughs> like, fuck it, like, hey girl, how are you? And I said, it's your son. And later that day, <laughs> she wrote back like, Hi, whoa, you know, like what the f probably like whole oh, is this a joke? Is this April Fools? And I called her I called her that night and we talked for hours. 
This next part is so hard to say out loud. Like I actually feel sick to my stomach. I called her and I go, hi, how are you? You know, like, what's up girl? And she goes, I'm homeless. How are you? And then she started crying immediately. And I was like, I haven't seen this person in 10 years, right? They don't know anything that I've been through and I don't know anything that she's been through. Every single struggle, every single moment, all the great times, all the horrible times, she knows nothing of what I've been through. And I literally know nothing of what she's been doing, of what's happened to her. So she tells me that for the last four years, she has been homeless and living in the trunk of her car, in the hatchback, sleeping in a trunk for four years. And I, I just cried with her. We cried for an hour together and I couldn't believe out of everything, out of anything that could happen, like why isn't she just living in a house married normal? Life dealt her the cards to end up living in her trunk and the how, the why, all of that, I don't feel comfortable sharing. It's such a scary topic and one day, Maybe she could tell you, maybe she could help me tell her story, but that is so crazy. I don't even know if that should be on my channel. Like that is just such a scary topic because it's my own mother and just talking about her though feels great. Like the fact that I can actually talk to my real mom and not pretend feels really great, it feels amazing. And I apologize to her for calling someone else my mother. I was embarrassed, <laughs> obviously. It, it devastated her, you know? She said, Jeffrey, I would check on you once in a while online to see if you were alive, but it was really hard to look. Um, so for the last two years, it's been really bad for her. Like full living a homeless lifestyle, um, not knowing where she's gonna shower, not knowing how she's gonna pee sometimes, um, not knowing how she's gonna eat her, her next meal. So hearing all of this, and I'm sitting in this crazy hotel in Hawaii, and I'm like, wow, life is nuts. It literally, like, put her at the lowest point in, in, in like, uh, it's just, it's hard to fathom. Like, we literally went like this. Like, the fact that I've had so much success in the last four years is mind-numbing, it's insane. And the fact that she lost everything and was homeless was just such a mind f to me. It, it, it was crazy. Because imagine we reconnect and I'm, I'm, I'm still almost homeless, or I'm working at the mall still, and I'm like, girl, I can't help you, how are you? But I sat there and I go, as of now, you're not homeless anymore. And I think it took her brain days to even like fathom this, and I flew home and I, met up with her immediately and I started to obviously help um, her become not homeless anymore, but to mentally unravel the layers of living and being homeless, of having so much fear and having so many horrible things happen to her. I don't, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to even say out loud. It, it's it, So there's so much in the middle and, and right now is not the time, but I don't even know what she's comfortable with me saying, but she's really bad off. It's really bad. So I've been trying to help and fix everything and not that houses and cars fix things. It's not about that. It's just getting her in a normal living condition. She hadn't slept in a real bed in over four years and I couldn't, I couldn't fathom that. Like how, how, how did this all this happen? So all of that has been going on since Christmas. So that has been such a huge, emotional weight on me and sometimes I don't snap for a few days and sometimes I disappear and I'm just kind of floating and I'm it's a lot mentally you know and on top of so many people relying on me on the business side of things and my relationship and personal things and feelings um, that has been a huge weight so if I'm ever acting weird sometimes in the last six months that's why and that has been a big secret of mine that I really wanted to get off my chest so Whew, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you for listening to this. The fact that I've reconnected with my mom is, I don't even know how to put it into words. It's so beautiful and it's so fulfilling emotionally to heal so many internal scars that me and her have both had and just to be able to hug each other. We're working on each other. 
and we're working on our relationship and I can't wait to see what the future brings. Those were a few secrets I really felt like I needed to get off my chest. If you're listening to this, just thank you. I know those two words can get repetitive, but just thank you. So um, in the future, I'd love to share more, but for now, um, this was a lot. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Whew, I feel good. Um, thank you for letting me share and for using my platform to talk about this stuff. So um, thank you guys for watching. I will see you on the next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.